These rather neat little lights were sent to me by a chap called Judd, who's an Australian who's living in China, and most notably is in Shenzhen, which is a major electronics district where all the electronic markets are. And he just asked if I wanted a selection of interesting items. And, um, I, well, yes, because, uh, you know, he sent me some stuff that's quite unusual and uh, that th I haven't even seen some of them on eBay. So that's quite interesting. And I'll be covering them in videos uh, over the course of the next few weeks. But um, in return, I'm going to actually, I asked Judd if I could do this. I, I'm going to put his email address down below uh, and probably a link. He's got an Alibaba type uh, page and I'm going to give, give, give a link to his email address anyway so that if you guys have any questions about fairly specialist items from China, he may be able to help you out. Uh, I'm not going to say that you can actually contact him and say, I want the best and highest power LEDs in the world for buttons. He's, I don't think you can really, A determine the quality uh, as you know you just can't actually guarantee quality from any Chinese supplier but um, he could certainly investigate maybe and find uh, things if you wanted some decent quantities but uh, in the meantime let's uh, take a look at these so I remember when the first verse of these came out and I'm pretty sure the first ones used a little Christmas light controller and all the LEDs red green and blue were in series and so it just did the, a few colors and it went through the Christmas light patterns and they seem to have evolved somewhat. They seem to have now given an address line to every single LED in here. It's still alternately red, green, blue all the way around, but they're, they're controllable individually. And by sequencing and uh, in like, if they light every third one, it's going to be just one color all the way around. And by doing that, uh, without using fancy LEDs, just ordinary red, green, and blue LEDs, they've got they can chase quite complex effects. And at the end of this video, I'm just going to let. Uh, the thing just run through its full cycle so you can see exactly what sort of effects it does. So let's take a look at the circuitry inside and then we'll compare it to the mains voltage one and we'll see. So I'm going to open the low voltage one up. I'm guessing from the positioning of the screws there's going to be another screw under this quality control label. I'll unplug that one at the moment, just so it doesn't detract. So I'm guessing microcontroller with, um, well obviously it's going to be a microcontroller, but with serial chips, a serial to parallel converter chips, just to actually allow maybe a big shift register to run all the LEDs, that that would be the sort of logical way to do it. And hold on, before I even look at these chips, I'm going to make a wild guess that it's the 4094. I might be wrong. 4094 is a CMOS shift register. Oh God, is that the microcontroller there? That's just a wee eight pin microcontroller. Because it is just putting serial data out, right? Okay, magnifying glass. Oh no, I'm wrong, damn. It's a SIM4 chip, 74HC, 595D. So I'm guessing that's going to be serial in parallel out shift register. Possibly an equivalent of the 4094. I'm also looking at, uh, I noticed that with the pattern, sometimes there's a bit of irregularity and this LED has just been slightly, I don't know if it's just got shorter leads or it's just trapped between the circuit board and the, well, let's see if this comes off actually. Oh, I just suddenly realized there's a microphone in that. I didn't realize there was an audio function. That'll explain why the switch is second position. I didn't really try that out. Mm. Uh, not really sure how that works. Okay, maybe it's not. Odd how they've actually made a big hole in the circuit board for the microphone and they've cut through a track. But then that track, I get the feeling that uh, this is designed for other... Oh, you know what? That looks like a bridge rectifier position. This has probably been designed for maximum versatility so they can put other supplies in. I wonder if this... It did say... Um, oh, right, you know, that switch only switches between external DC and the battery. All right, OK. But there is no external DC input in this one, so that's just obviously a redundant position in the switch. But the circuitry is there to accommodate the external DC with a voltage regulator, which makes sense. 
So I'm guessing that would be then put through a bridge rectifier, smoothing capacitor, and then over to the voltage regulator. Okay, that's reasonable enough, so let's try and uh, prise this off a bit. Is this going to come off? Finest Poundland batteries, alkaline. Ooh, that's not really... I may have to use a little bit of leverage. Oh, there we go. Not a lot in the back. There's the little random microphone that's just been included for no obvious reason at all. Unless it, it, it does have the facility at really high sound pressure levels to actually react. Uh, where's the LED that was squint? Oh, there it is. It's just because it's uh, not been folded down properly. Oh, that's easily fixed. I quite like that, just the bare circuit board on its own. That would look quite nice screwed to a wall, wouldn't it? Just doing its stuff. Let's put the batteries back in. I kind of like that, just the circuit board and the LEDs chasing around. It is quite annoying, the patterns at times, but, you know, now I see that it's a PIC 12 type. I say PIC 12, you know, it's an 8-pin chip, probably with no number on it. No number, it's one of those... Kind of, what happens if someone drops a box and there's hundreds of different types of functions? All these chips have no numbers. Do they, do they just program them on demand, or do they actually get them in bulk in tubes marked with the with the chips function? So, um, yeah, just looking around at this, uh, I'm looking at the are they, these resistors. Are they just zero ohm links? Because I, I don't see, I see some of these. The uh, outputs of the shift registers go straight to the LEDs. Uh, other ones, oh, they're zero ohm links. It just says zero on them, so they are just jumpers across. They're driving it straight from the output of the chip for maximum intensity. I see a couple of wee transistors next to the... which I guess would be for the audio circuitry if it was enabled in any way. I'm not 100% sure that's for. I'm not sure if it's maybe just a, a, an optional function that can be used if they put the appropriate chip in. Okay, so that's uh, that one. Let's uh, take a look in the other one. I'm, I'm intrigued by the fact that that is just a shift register all the way around. It suggests that all you need is data and clock to be able to take control over that. And it's, it would be interesting to see if they've got it in the correct numerical sequence. You know, if you sent, if you just clocked a single bit right through, if it would actually just light the LEDs sequentially. So let's take a look in the mains powered one. I'm guessing there's going to be a power supply, given that this is 4.5 volts. I'm guessing there's going to be a USB type power supply in here. Possibly just a discrete flyback, or is there going to be a little uh, dedicated switch mode power supply chip? This one's quite nice in the sense that it's got the uh, translucent case. It looks quite quite visual, but I, I like the stark blackness of that one. In a dark room, it's actually quite psychedelic when you mount it on a wall. And of course, that one runs off batteries, so um, it's uh, autonomous, so to speak. Okay. This one's not screwed in it. I don't think it is. Oh, okay. Well, I ain't seeing... I'm seeing the same sort of range of the microcontrollers. The uh, addressing chip the same? I guess it will be SIM4HC595D. Yep. Uh, any number in that chip? No, no number in that chip again. Means input goes through a bridge rectifier. There's a microphone in that one again. I wonder if there's some way that I don't know to activate the microphone, or maybe it's just not enabled in these models. Maybe it's just an optional extra. You have to pay a bit more for that function, not 100% sure. The... Switchboard power supply... has just one transistor, which is a bit odd. Normally, I'd expect two transistors. It must perhaps just be this absolute most super minimal uh, circuit possible. Possibly just deriving feedback directly from the primary without any sort of uh, fancy sort of feedback from, you know, it will just be running flat out all the time to provide a, a fixed voltage, a rough voltage at this side. 
Uh, I'm not sure if there's any regulation. I don't actually see any regulation. Although you'd they'd really want to cap this down to 5 volts. Yeah, it's very strange that, you know, it is just one transistor, that's odd. Unless it's a dedicated 3-pin switch mode power supply driver. Unfortunately, it's right behind that capacitor, which just makes that a little bit harder to read. Oh, hot chip HT1608. That is a dedicated switch mode driver. That makes sense. Oh, quite clever that they've just got it into a single transistor packet. It's got the uh, coupling capacitor from the... I think that's coupling capacitor from... The input to the output. Is that for suppression? Technically speaking, the output doesn't need even to be isolated. I'm not sure. Oh, no, I think that's part of the feedback circuit. That might even be the um, snubber across the coil. I shall investigate that. And I'll leave a wee note uh, if I work out what this actual capacitor's for. I'll leave it in the description. But yeah, you know, it's uh, fundamentally uh, the same as that, but with... Uh, well, let's compare the two circuit boards. Oh, yeah, look, it is. It's the same circuit board. I didn't think there was enough circuitry for the switch mode power supply. But, of course, that that what I thought was a regulator there is actually the... That is purely the mains input version. That is the actual switch mode power supply chip. That's quite neat. Um, so yeah, this is a good effect. So uh, now I'm I'm just going to let this thing run and you'll see what it actually looks like. I've discovered what the microphone does. Watch this. It reverses the pattern every time it detects the thump of the bass. So now I'm going to let it run through its whole effects program for you so you can see what it does.